Hello friends. So today we are going to discuss about the kernel memory. What is the kernel and uh, what are kernel objects? How the kernel objects are assessed? What are the rules uh, that are followed by the operating system uh, to assess the kernel memory? When you as a programmer write some program and you try to access the kernel memory, what happens? That And what are the APIs that are exposed for you uh, to use the kernel memory, right? So uh, you might have studied in your college days uh, that uh, kernel, when you have studied about the operating system, you must be knowing that kernel is the core of the operating system. It is the main part of the operating system, right? So kernel is basically a memory area which is uh, initialized at the very first time when your computer starts, right? Uh, any memory area which is nice first is the kernel and kernel is the core of the operating system. It uh, uh, it is uh, able to it is able it is uh, responsible uh, for performing all the tasks that are system critical right and it is a protected area in memory this area is not open for anyone it's not for you like as a programmer you cannot disturb that area you cannot use that area if you want to use that area your operating system will use on your behalf you will just find uh, you will just send a command to your uh, operating system in the form of some api call that i need to do this Right. So let's start the, our discussion with the basic concepts of the kernel. So I hope it's uh, visible to you. So kernel is at the core of the operating system. Right. So um, the kernel objects, basically, uh, when the kernel memory is initialized, it is a protected area in the memory. You cannot touch it right if you want to touch it operating system has provided you some apis to use that to do that but you are not going to touch any of the kernel object directly right so uh, if we talk about the kernel objects there are many uh, there are many of them uh, i will discuss i will name few of them right like one is uh, mutex one is semaphore the other is event object right and uh, like mail slots right these are all uh, the uh, basics basic uh, kernel objects right so when we talk about the kernel object they are maintained by the kernel of the operating system <clears throat> they are created by the kernel they are destroyed by the kernel they cannot be destroyed by you you cannot destroy them as a programmer, you cannot destroy them, right? Uh, so how do they perform? Means how do they work throughout the system? When you use them in your program, how they uh, able, how they are able to help you, right? So there are a few things we must need to understand. Uh, the first thing is we must need to study about the kernel object. Means what is a kernel object, what it contains, right? Like for any, any kind of entity, uh, just like you have uh, some entity like uh, a vehicle a vehicle has many things like it's uh, how many tires it would have uh, it would have uh, what kind of fuel it will use so all these things are the properties of a vehicle object right similarly kernel objects has few properties the main prop i will discuss about the main properties only right one is uses count one is uses count the other is the state right a state uh, there can be two states one state is signal the other state is non signal right there are two states signal and non signal states so these are the two basic properties of a kernel object Right. This is my kernel object, and these are the two basic properties: the state and the uses count. Uses count tell you that how many programs or how many uh, threads, right? How many threads are using your kernel object? Like if uh, one process is using your kernel object, then its uses count would be one. And uh, as soon as some other process try to use the same kernel object, it will be added plus one, so the uses count will be two. If the third process is going to use this kernel object, then the uses count will be plus one means three, right? 
so this is uh, the way your kernel objects you maintain the uses count how they are maintained how they uh, they can be maintained right uh, there are uh, uh, various uh, apis using which you can create those kernel objects as soon as you create a kernel object you are using a particular kernel object and uh, you are using the same kernel object that has been used by some other program in that case uh, the uses count for your program for your process for your thread will be increased right suppose uh, you have created three programs app1 app2 app3.exe there are three exes first exe is also using the kernel object the second exe also using the same kernel object the third exe is also using the same kernel object in that case the kernel object's uses count will be three right for example take that uh, take for example we can take the example of a mutex or you can say that uh, any any mail slot or anything uh, for simplicity you will take the mutex so if three processes are using the same mutex then the at the same time if all of them are using the same kernel object then the uses count would be three right as soon as you close the handle basically there is an api which is uh, known as close handle right i'm not going to write it here this is a simple fun api that you can uh, see uh, on the uh, msdn documentation so as soon as you call that close handle api uh, the uses count reduces by minus one, right? Means suppose uh, three applications were using your kernel object, and one of them gets got closed, or one of them calls the close handle function. When you call the close handle function, it means that you are done with your uh, uh, task. You are done with your task with this kernel object, right? So as soon as you are done with your kernel object, the uses count will be minus one. And suppose you forget to uh, call the close handle API. In that case as well, the uses count will become minus one. How? As soon as your program will be closed, as soon as your program will be closed, uh, operating system itself maintains the uses count. As soon as your program will close, it will itself, operating system will itself reduce the uses count by minus one, if you have not called the close handle. So kernel objects cannot leak, basically. They cannot leak. If your application is getting closed if your application is running and in the, in that case you have not closed it then your system uh, your application can malfunction but if you have uh, not closed it but your application gets closed then it doesn't mean that kernel object will leak so this is the main con this is one of the main concepts right so kernel objects cannot leak if your application gets closed without closing the handle operating system maintains itself how it maintains i will let you know in the uh, next uh, session but in today's session, we will discuss basically the kernel objects only, right? So as soon as uh, your application, your first application, which was using this kernel object will be closed, its uses count will be reduced by minus one. So if it was three, then it will become two, right? Now, if suppose the other application which was running that gets also closed, then in that case, it will become two minus one means one, right? And as soon as the last application, the app three gets closed, in that case, what it will become, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, right? So as soon as all the three instances, all the three applications will get closed, which were using the same kernel objects, if they get closed, then the uses count will become 0. As soon as the uses count becomes 0, the kernel object is destroyed by the operating system itself, right? Operating system itself destroys the kernel object as soon as your um, uh, uses count for the kernel object becomes zero. You never destroy. As a programmer, you cannot destroy a kernel object. Always remember this. You can never destroy. If if someone says that uh, if you call the close handle, that it means that if you are destroying the kernel object, that's a misconception, right? If you call close handle, simply it simply means that you are going to reduce the uses count by one. That's it. You are telling the operating system that I am done with this uh, with this kernel object and I'm going to close this. Please close this for me. So that handle will be closed. That object will not be destroyed. So this is how the operating system maintains the kernel objects for you on behalf of you as a programmer. As a, you are as a programmer, uh, you write some application, you use some kernel objects, you create kernel objects. Like if you want to create mutex, then there is an API call uh, named create mutex, right? You call the create mutex function and your mutex kernel object is created right and you at the same time uses count becomes one if some other application is, is going to use the same mutex object with the same name then in that case the mutex uses count will become plus two 
if with the same name another application is going to use uh, your mutex kernel object then uses count will come three and as soon as one uh, one by one your application gets closed the uses count will be decreased one 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 and ultimately when it will it, when it will become zero uh, your operating system will itself destroy that kernel object that's it that is the uh, basic concept of uses count for the kernel objects right now the other concept is the state of the kernel objects the signal and non signal state signal state and non signal state signal and non signal right signal means your kernel object is available basically uh, these kernel objects whatever we are discussing here like mutex semaphores or event object they all are used for synchronization they all use for synchronization synchronization means if some application is uh, working on some resource and <clears throat> that resource is the only resource that uh, one thread can access at a time then the other thread should not disturb that resource until that resource has been used by some other thread that should not be used by some other thread suppose thread 1 is using a resource and uh, thread 2 also want to use the same resource like say it's a printer it's it's a single printer right and uh, it's it's a kind of printer where only one uh, uh, print uh, printout can be given right so if one thread or one process on the from the same from the same system is uh, going to print something is trying to give some printout and at the same time some other thread or some other process also going to give this uh, printout then only one printout at a time can be printed and until that till that time that uh, printing is done the other thread or the other program need to wait for its printing to be done you can you need to assume this kind of printer there is uh, no such printer basically they queue the request and uh, they process it one by one but i am just going to uh, simplify it right i'm just trying to simplify it that's why i am giving an example of a printer which can only print one uh, print which can only uh, take you take one printout for you at a time and if some other process is trying to give some other, give some print out at the same time then it need to wait right so this is called synchronization one at a time if there are two then one at a time no two persons at the same time can access the same resource that those kind of needs are there when we will discuss about the programs uh, in the coming sessions then you will be able to understand that what is the concept and what is the significance of synchronization when you uh, do the programming right as per the customer needs as per the needs of the uh, system you may need to uh, implement the kernel objects in your system right so here we are just uh, studying the basic concepts right so we are discussing here the signal and non signal state basically signal state means this kernel object is available to use non signal means this kernel object is not available to use suppose there was a printer that i took the example as an example this was the printer and uh, there is one person which is coming here to print right so what he will do he will first try to find out let me uh, put some better picture here this is the printer right so this is person 1 p1 and this is person 2 p2 right this person p1 wants to give some print out to this printer right so before it give the uh, print out to printer it will first check an object which is the kernel object say it is a mutex object right we will discuss about mutex in detail but uh, uh, for today's session session uh, just try to understand like uh, it's a kernel object which will only allow one at a time one person at a time so before it this p1 goes to print something uh, this will try to find out this will go here first it will go here and will try to find out whether this mutex is signaled or not signal means available or not if this is available no one is printing here then what it will do it will make it non signal the flag down it will make it non signal and then it will go to print it right first it will make it non signal this kernel object 
and then it will go to print it right if at the same time some other person p2 comes this p2 will also do the same thing it will try to find out first if this kernel object is available or not whether this is flag if it is signaled or not since this p1 is still in process means this p1 is still not done with the printing task this p2 will find out that this kernel object is not signaled so it will wait here there are various options provided by the uh, operating system apis windows apis that you can wait for infinite wait for this uh, kernel object inf infinitely or you can wait on this kernel object for a specified timeout that is all that we all will discuss in coming uh, lectures but uh, today just understand that it will wait for some time suppose it will wait for infinitely till this printing task is done as soon as this printing task is done and this p1 knows that yes printing is done what it will do it will make it signal how it will make it signal by calling close handle if it says close handle or if in case of mutex it says release mutex right there are various apis that we will discuss they are specific to mutex and semaphores so basically just understand that this p1 before leaving after the printing is done before leaving itself it will make it flag means a signal flag up and as soon as this person who is looking for the flag to be signal it will find that now the flag is up it means someone else who was working here is done so i am in so i can do my printing work so what it will do it will go here and it will print right so this way the printing is done in a synchronized manner and uh, this example basically with respect to a kernel object is uh, about the mutex this is a concept of mutex mutual exclusion one at a time right so with this help with the help of this example i have shown you that how two processes are more than two process no matter if some person p3 comes right no matter if p4 comes they all will follow the same rule they will first check whether the kernel object is available if available means if signal then it will go to print otherwise it will wait here depending on as a programmer how much uh, waiting time you have provided right so this is the way the synchronization is done and this is the way your uh, uh, kernel objects works this is the basic concept of kernel objects how they help you to synchronize the things and this is very much needed when you are doing the programming when you are writing complex system when you are writing the servers basically when you are writing this uh, when you are uh, writing the server side code uh, at that time you must need to encounter these kind of concepts right and you can get the request from the customer you can get the requirements from the customer to implement such a system where uh, using these kernel objects will be inevitable right so i hope uh, this uh, particular session helped you to understand the kernel objects and in next session we will study about the process handle table right how a process or when you write a program how that program is going to uh, manage your kernel object and how you as a programmer when you write the code how you see your kernel objects in your program right so i hope you got uh, uh, today's session and uh, uh, in next session we will discuss about the uh, process handle table okay so till then goodbye